right there. And you're talking about uh, the teacher strikes that literally entering uh, the second week despite a court order from the Labor Relations Court to call off the strike. Corporate teachers are still up in arms and they're saying they're proceeding it because they need the demands addressed from remuneration to health coverage to uh, JSS teachers and many other facets. And then we'll also deep dive into the current funding model. What are some of the places that need a facility from a student's perspective? That's what we're going to delve into. And so right up on X, on Facebook and Insta. There's a question, I'll get to it. We are asking you, Jay, strike your limb in a far cooler changes Gandhi co work policies. And this is some of the issues that the previous guest has literally tackled. But now let's get to hear from the students. And I'm being joined live in studio by Gichange Gitonga. He's a financial engineer student at J Court, alongside uh, Nicholas uh, Ombati Ratemo. He's Secretary General, Zit University at Brian Sakon One at Y254 channel. Let me start off with you, uh, Mr. Gichangi. What are some of the notable things that you've picked since uh, this teacher strike began? And uh, from a student's perspective, what are some of the things that you believe if you had a chance to be on that negotiating table, you would speak and be a voice to add on to the impact of what teachers are contributing? Mm, thank you for the opportunity, sir. And first and foremost, it's a very sad state of affairs that in this country, the teacher is one of the most disrespected people. Uh, the teacher is somebody who will go to college or to campus for four good years. They will study, they will do a lot of things, and then once they get out, they will first tarmac because there have been a lot of people who have done teaching. And after that tarmacking, once they get to school, they give their all, they struggle, they ensure that their students pass. And teaching is not just about what they are taught in college. The teacher must have emotional intelligence. The teacher must be there for the students and the pupils. Yeah. But eventually the teacher will be very much disrespected. So if I was on that negotiating table, the first thing I would ensure that I will do from the ministry side is to ensure that the teacher is respected and the teacher is treated as the teacher ought to be treated. So disrespect yeah. is something that is really plaguing the teachers and it is bringing their moral down. Yeah. Let me jump on to you, Mr. Mbati. One of the rising issues again among, you know, what teachers are listing is lack of engagement from higher up there, you know, Minister of Education, Cabinet Secretary, and now to teachers and then now the learners, and now you can include now the whole facet of now parents, because it's a whole chain, right? So when a decision is made and it doesn't include all these people, they get to feel, I think the word still is disrespected, but let's say they feel left out. What are some of the notable things as well that you've noted? Okay, um, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I feel it's good I introduce myself first. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I've already yeah. said yet. I've just proceeded with the point here. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, the way my fellow colleague, my good friend from J Quarters, uh, mentioned that uh, teachers are being res uh, disrespected. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, it's uh, maybe that uh, the, the chain that you have mentioned mm -hmm. from the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Teacher Service Commission, maybe. I feel like uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. They are not being engaged well. That's why they feel like uh, we have to maybe to go to the streets mm -hmm. so that we can be heard. I feel uh, it's good uh, everyone to be involved in this. Uh, maybe teachers to be listened to mm -hmm. so that uh, we can have that uh, good mutual between the the, the TSC and uh, also the CUPET and uh, all of the teachers. Yeah. yeah, and these in inconsistencies have always been there. Uh, this is not the first time, it's just at this time maybe it has intensified and the teachers are like, you know what, if you don't address it this time round, yeah, you're not going back to class. But you yourself, you're a student who is pursuing education, yeah? So do you believe that once you've done and you, yeah, I don't know which part of education you specialize, specialized in, uh, are you a classroom teacher? Yeah. So you'll definitely be yeah, looked forward to be employed by TSC. Sure. Right. So if, if for example, if you finish yeah, and uh, you start looking for employment, what are some of the things that you want addressed as of right now? Because I believe even the voice, the, stu the students' voices really matter when it comes to uh, 
having their teacher because there's even uh, I was reading yesterday a statistic that said since uh, 2003 when free education uh, was dispersed uh, students student influx literally doubled and you realize there's even counties that are, they mentioned I think 30 students are being handled by one single teacher and there's even more that are experiencing even times three of that so what are some of the things that you want addressed before you step into that profession to practice now uh, I believe uh, as a teacher there's a profession that uh, must be respected and uh, uh, maybe as the voice of the teachers who are coming and who are in I feel one thing that uh, must be addressed is uh, about salary mm -hmm. about payment okay. teachers need good payment mm -hmm. because uh, for instance let me say let me mention this uh, you can't give me 17,000 shillings Mm -hmm. As a teacher, maybe I have a, a, a kid in school, I have a house I want to, to pay, maybe rent. So a key factor here is about salary. Mm -hmm. the, the services that teachers offer does not accompany with the salary that is being paid. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing must be addressed. Okay. Yeah. Another one? Uh, second is about uh, the environment environment where teachers uh, uh, deliver their services. Mm -hmm. uh, the equipment, uh, let me for instance say that um, maybe uh, the government should consider offering uh, equipment maybe to schools. Let me, let me use uh, public schools. Yes. You find that uh, one day our, our president mentioned that uh, some schools they don't have uh, laboratories, yeah. maybe for these uh, sciences subjects like chemistry. So we need these, uh, these equipments, we need these laboratories, so that it can be easier for teachers to deliver their services to students. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, speaking to that, uh, you've noted even in your own institution, right? I, I don't know, you guys have you know, th some of these facilities, but when it comes to even monies or finances that are allocated to ensure that these uh, uh, instruments are functional, there seems to be hitches here and there. Do you believe maybe the problem stems down from decision making? Like we should have prior conversation less here. In fact, now I think with the funding model, uh, in one of the, one of the uh, uh, voices was saying they did not have open public participation that included less here from the vice chancellors, uh, deputy vice chancellors. Now you can add in students as well, and now even parents here. Yeah? So now everybody is up in arms because of just lack of a single conversation that should have led to like let's have one voice and agree this and that moving forward. Are there are there maybe things that you personally have witnessed that could catalyze this conversation to a point where? We're going to have solutions now. He's mentioned equipment from a teacher's perspective and also a learner's perspective. Yeah. Mm, I think that we need to get rid of hypocrisy mm -hmm. because that is one thing that plagues our country as we speak. Uh, we have politicians who are very good at promising us things. Mm -hmm. We have politicians who have had the previous speaker mention that we these people will be very much willing to go to the villages during the campaign times yeah. and they will promise a lot of things and actually because I'm also a politician, uh, I'm also somebody interested in politics okay. I've realized that they will never campaign without going to the teachers mm -hmm. they will always use the schools because the teacher is a very focal point, this teacher has around uh, 50 students in that class and the 50 students have parents or guardians who are yeah. voters so by using this uh, teacher who will even teach in like three four classes by tackling one teacher you might be getting 150 votes and some yeah. schools have as much as 100 teachers so we have very big problem of, of hypocrisy and if we were to get rid of that you know if you do not promise me something I will not be anticipating it if yeah. you do not come to promise me a salary hike at least even though it will not be very much content I will not feel cheated once you do not bring that salary hike. So we need to get rid of hypocrisy in this country. Remember in the last town hall, I posed a question to the president and... Oh, you were in the last town hall? No, the, like the, the, the one... No, no, oh, the, yeah, the one in the KCC, one. yes. Okay. Okay. So the president spoke of the issue of consolidating all these funds to his citizens so that they could disburse them. But now you see, as a teacher, I cannot imagine myself 
uh, receiving underpayment yeah. and then hearing from Nancy Gadungu that we had uh, billions of shillings stolen from a citizen. Mm. And then you are telling me that there is no money to pay me. Right. I cannot uh, believe as a teacher that I can see an MP selling bursaries and yeah. then you tell me that there is no money to pay me. I, I, it is very hard for me as a teacher to try comprehending that there is no money and I can see that somebody, for example, and I will not want it to sound rude, named who never went to class receiving a salary uh, of at least 100,000 and receiving a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to just look at it from the perspective of a teacher. So yeah. one of the things that is really plaguing this country, and you know probably teachers will not have been motivated to strike if the Gen Z had not striked. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, they, they've been striking previously, but we've reached at a point, a point in this country where we have realized that sometimes the government only listens to force, and mm -hmm. it's a very bad point for a country. So we need a total system overhaul. We need yeah. leaders who will be accountable. We need leaders who will not give us false promises. We need leaders mm -hmm. who will do their work without going to those offices to steal. Because teachers will actually be angrier trying to look at these people looting from the public. Mm -hmm. And then we are also here to provide solutions. And so we might suggest to the government to increase the salaries. And the government tells us that there is no money. And then we hear from the same, same government that there is money being stolen. Yeah. We listen to the president telling us that because I've been to these state house meetings and you say that education is a priority. Yeah. It should not even be the second, but it's the first. But now you see that is the problem. Mm. Promises yes. that are never fulfilled. So we need a total overhaul of the system. Yeah. Another issue that's festering in that, uh, that crop trap is uh, understaffing. Uh, we mentioned there's uh, a county that has 150 students with like just two teachers in the whole entire school. And I believe that's unbelievable. It's unfathomable to have two teachers with 150 students teaching. Uh, and that again uh, contributes to things like burnout, mental health issues. Even now, uh, part of the things that they want addressed is remuneration, even the medical covers as well, yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you believe are the effects of understaffing to the teacher and now also back to the students before I get to you? Uh, for understaffing, for one, there's another critical issue. I have a lot of friends who are teachers, and they usually complain of parents. Uh, we'll also have to tackle this. Not every fault, not everything that the teacher is suffering from comes from the government. We have parents who are also very disrespectful to our teachers. So trying to put myself in the teacher's shoes, I have 150 students. I try to do my best. I wake up every day early, being underpaid. Uh, being under, being in a school that is understaffed and having a school that has very little equipment or not the right equipment, equipment that does not uh, fit the needs of the students. And then I hear students speaking in a certain way. You hear just students disrespecting the teacher or pupils. And then you realize as a teacher that this pupil, this is not, this is not how the pupil thinks. This is what the parents say at home when they are the, with the teacher alone. Uh -huh. So these parents, there are a lot of parents who usually disrespect the teachers. Uh -huh. You go to the marketplace, you hear things like, uyu mwalimu wafanyangi, uyu mwalimu wadi afunzi vizuri. As in, you know, sometimes I've had teachers get to a point of telling some parents, just take your child and go and teach them. Yeah. Because we do have some uh, parents who disrespect teachers a lot. So you can imagine you're in a school that you're understaffed, mm -hmm. and then you have parents who do not appreciate you. Yeah. And pupils who take that from the parents. Mm -hmm. So you see eventually it's a whole vicious cycle that drains the teacher to the point that the teacher feels like it's not worth it. Yeah. That even though there's a certain salary, even because sometimes it's not even about salaries for some teachers, it's about the morale. You yeah. find a lot of things usually bring the teacher down. And so the teacher is actually an endangered species in terms of jobs. Yeah. So there's a lot that needs to be done when it comes to the teacher. It's a multi-sectoral approach. Parents should also up their game. Yes, yeah. as parents, probably their parents listening, do not speak ill of a teacher who is trying yeah. to do their best and probably they are in a school that they are understaffed. Yeah. So let us also be empathetic because yeah. if we are empathetic to the teacher, remembering that you, because these parents will go and drop their children to school, it's like they transfer the liability to the teacher. They do yeah. not see their children as assets, yeah. but they see them as liabilities. And once you, once they leave them uh, in those schools, they still go on to speak ill of the teacher. 
Yeah. So we need a lot of changes when it comes to it. So understaffing is a very big issue and it even becomes worse when you have people who do not appreciate you. Yes, absolutely. I love that. And I think it should be a group, a, a concerted group effort from both parties. Uh, that's what I'm picking from you to just ensure that you give morale to the teachers. Uh, but you also learn that, you know, at least you spent half of your life in an institution. Mm -hmm. And that's literally in the hands of a teacher or a tutor. It could be a college tutor, a lecturer, a professor, whoever, yeah. But then when it comes to another issue of motivation, uh, he's mentioned, let's speak well of the teachers, yeah? Do you believe we should offer things like maybe incentives, like let's motivate the teachers. Uh, there's, there's somebody who recommended, let, let's have teachers join circles. Let's even have them being added some liturgies to just even kickstart them in those circles because uh, there's one of the uh, education stakeholders who is saying they're not even ab unable to process the insurance because of the pre-authorization pre process. It has to go, I don't know, they have to make a call, I don't know up to where. So it ends up rendering them to yeah, in just bad condition. Do you believe we should start maybe a program that, let's say, let's fund teachers now. Let's start giving them incentives. Even uh, best performing teachers, we can even have award ceremonies the way we have it in the creative industry. Because I believe even teaching is a creative process, right? I don't know if you see it in that panoramic view. All right. Mm. Mr. Sakwa, uh, allow me to say this. Uh, first, uh, I think uh, understaff, uh, you have mentioned that uh, we have around uh, uh, 150 students being taught by two teachers in a, in a, a school. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, uh, as, as, uh, as a, a government of Kenya, we are failing mm -hmm. because uh, we have many teachers who are not uh, employed. Yeah. Now, let me take this example, maybe in, uh, in Trukana. Yes. Uh, there's a school with one teacher, maybe two teachers, mm -hmm. as you have mentioned earlier. And we, yet we have many teachers who are not uh, employed. Yeah. Yes? Now, uh, my, my friend has mentioned uh, uh, respecting teachers, motivating teachers. Now, uh, teachers, now they, they are in strike right now. Yes. Because they are not motivated. Yes. Because the salary is uh, low, yeah. low, right? Mm. Now, as a government, we should look uh, a way of motivating these teachers, of increasing uh, uh, their, their salary, of uh, maybe uh, looking for that, that uh, equipment, maybe infrastructure in, uh, in these institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. Okay. Teachers... Uh, are being, let me say, undermined, right? So we don't complain that uh, we have understaff, yet we have many teachers who are not working, who are not employed, right? Mm -hmm. So what I can say on that, as, as a government, let us go beyond. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can say this, uh, in, in Nairobi County, mm -hmm. We have many schools, all right? We have employed, we have many employed teachers, yeah. all right? Which criteria that was being used in Nairobi that can't be used in Trukana mm -hmm. as a government? Let yeah. us focus on these marginalized areas. Let us build schools there so that teachers can get this opportunity. Teachers can be employed. Yeah. Okay, you, you can say that uh, these areas like Trukana uh, maybe some of them they don't like to go there because of what infrastructure uh, equipment even climatic the, the, condition the, yeah. the climatic condition environment you can say that mm -hmm. now as the government we should look uh, a way for a way to improve this uh, this uh, situation in mm -hmm. these areas so that we can have teachers who can go there and work and deliver services yeah. right Mm -hmm. yeah. If uh, I think the issue is on employment, yeah? Mm -hmm. there, there are so many teachers who have qualified, but there's also maybe some that have not qualified. I don't know if it's possible to get a teacher who did not go through the whole training process and they've secured a job as compared to, even like you, because mm -hmm. you said you're in 4.1, sure. you're very soon yet to graduate and then get to the job market. So that job hunting process of somebody who has the papers and then the TUC is here and then now Cupid is here. So that 
you know, that, that successful picking and then rolling it into that institution. So I think the issue is professionalizing the profession, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, the, the, the consistent thing from both of you is that they're not taking teachers serious, yeah? But then uh, there's the issue of brain drain, still on you, Mr. Mbati. There's, uh, there's those that will opt to go to outside country. And I believe uh, the president has been very vocal on creating alternatives to uh, some of the issues that are festering right here in the country. I believe, is it Germany or Canada or Australia? There's one of those countries that is hiring a lot of Kenyan nurses and uh, teachers as well. So do you believe maybe that could be an alternative solution to what is currently happening in the country? Because I also, I also do believe that not everyone who graduates from university can instantly get a job opportunity in a government institution. Because also one of the issues they're saying, even for the GSS, the GSS intern teachers, they want them to be employed on permanent and pensionable, which I believe should be a, nego a, nego a negotiable process. Probably there's a lot of factors to be considered. They said they're hiring, I think, uh, the president has said 70 or 70, 72,000. They managed to hire, I think, 46 or 50, a uh, roundup of 40 to 50 right there. Do you believe? Uh, Maybe going outside should be an alternative so that we don't consistently and incessantly have these issues. We solve a little bit and then we still go back to the same, 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 same issue again, starting from scratch, and here we are, back to the streets again. All right. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, I believe that uh, working for Kenya is better than working for Germany. Mm -hmm. We can create our own dollar, as uh, our president always say. Uh, we have said about understaff. Two teachers equivalent to 150 students. Mm -hmm. Now, you are saying that you don't have teachers, and yet you are telling us to send some to other countries. Mm -hmm. is, is everything right there? I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. So let us create the opportunities, employment opportunities for our teachers uh -huh. right now. Let us be satisfied first as a country so that if we have others who are not uh, able to work in Kenya, can go to this, these uh, uh, outside countries, right? Yeah. So we can't say that we send teachers to outside countries, yet in our own country we have a problem, right? Yeah. We are saying that we don't have uh, jobs, Yet, we are uh, struggling, students are struggling, 150 students, yeah. two teachers, right? So what I can say is that uh, I don't support this thing of uh, work, okay, uh, uh, exporting teachers, mm. right, to other countries. I don't encourage that. Yeah. What I can advise is that uh, let us use our brain. Let mm. us use our professional teachers to, to educate our, 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 our kids. And do you believe it's possible to have enough opportunities for all teachers who are still training in the training process right, right here in the country? Pardon? Do you believe it's possible to have opportunities for all of them? Like even for you, you're okay. just exiting campus, I don't know, in the next few. Uh, do you believe you instantly get an opportunity? Okay, let me say, if as a as, 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 as the government of Kenya, uh -huh. if we decide that we are going to get the opportunities for these teachers, mm -hmm. we can. Okay. Everything is possible, right? right. Mm -hmm. this, this, uh, I, I have mentioned earlier that um, if Nairobi County, we have around uh, 10,000 employed teachers, mm -hmm. now we can, we can use this, uh, this criteria we used in Nairobi to create these uh, opportunities in Trukana, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe that everyone can get the opportunity to work in this country without being exported to other, other nations. And I think, just to interject, uh, yeah. of course, once these outside countries, let's pick Germany, for example, yeah. if they want to pick teachers, they will pick the best. Right. They, okay, we must also acknowledge that we have rankings uh, in any position, yeah, even in the like media industry. as well. From yes, C1, C2, C3, D. Yeah. And yeah. it's also an issue you'll come to because some teachers who are employed in other places will get paid more than others who are employed in another place, though they are on the same grade. But yeah. you see, Germany will not pick just any teacher, mm -hmm. it will pick the best. Right. So, as you've spoken of brain drain, 
before yeah. and just to add to what Mr. Umbati has said, before we start exporting our teachers, let, let us ensure that we have the best and let us ensure that the best are motivated to work in their own country. Because mm -hmm. once we give away these good teachers to those countries, we'll remain in the poverty that we are in as Africa. Because mm -hmm. we give away our best, for example, we usually export ores, uh, for example, the gold ore, and then import the gold itself, the refined gold, at a very expensive price. We export tea uh, that is not dried tea, that is not processed, and then we get back tea leaves. We, we get back tea bags, which are very expensive. Yeah. And so we are in some certain vicious cycle of poverty as Africa, because we usually give the West our best, and then remain with the rest. Mm -hmm. You see, we remain with uh, those that... We, we, we are not saying that uh, there are teachers that cannot teach well, but mm -hmm. any time that these countries want to pick somebody, they will pick the best. And yeah. they will pay them very well because these countries have realized something. Mm -hmm. Once they invest in their intellectual capital, right. the country is assured of developing even more. And us, the developing countries, will continue to underdevelop. Yeah. So before we start being told that there are teachers that need to be exported, let us ensure that the best of us are motivated. Yeah. There's also uh, one of the issues that uh, they've vehemently talked about is the collective bargain agreements, uh, the CBS, 2021-2025. Uh, but then uh, uh, the, the, the authority has cited, cited that they don't have enough funding. And uh, remember, most literally one of the key sensitive dockets include the health uh, sector, the education sector. Do you believe probably maybe they're not taking it seriously in terms of... Uh, Let's prioritize teachers because, like you've said, we've mentioned here, at least you spend half of your entire childhood in a teacher's hand. What, what makes them to not take education seriously? I understand it's also among uh, the top, could be SDG4, SDG5 among World Health, Organ uh, not World Health Organization, United Nations, yeah, SDG. So what could possibly be triggering this? Is it because the government does not have funds or maybe they're not taking the profession seriously? Or maybe they're thinking of other alternatives. And, and also somebody even mentioned, even in regards to uh, the funding model, perhaps maybe they should have done even a pilot here first. So from just some in, in, inconsistencies in between to now, you know, teacher strikes, funding and whatnot. What's your opinion on that one? Mm, it's precisely what I told the president while you were in that town hall. Okay. We usually give a lot of suggestions, but they rarely listen. We have these collective bargaining agreements, and probably that is what they will do. And sometimes it's unfortunate that we have leaders of these unions, let's say even NAT or KOTU, uh, who will be called to a certain table and then they will be bribed and told, and they get told that just keep quiet and then this Implement issue. Implement the model. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's very much unfortunate that we have, again, promises, very fake promises which usually end up hurting people more than if no promise was given. Mm -hmm. So for these collective bargaining agreements, I believe that if our government is committed, uh, not committed in terms of saying they are committed, because we have people who are very good at that in Kenya, we need people who will be committed to saying what they uh, to saying to do what they say and saying what they will do. If teachers are told that we will employ 5,000 more teachers, let at least 4,500 teachers be employed and not 1,000. If teachers are told we will increase your salary by 4,500 shillings, let it at least be increased by 4,000 and not by 1,000 or by uh, a very fictional 4,500. So we need commitment. We just need seriousness in this country. Because you cannot tell us that Kenya does not have money. I've, as a financial engineer, I can assure you that in Kenya, if this government decides, and if we as a community, if we decided to be a Kenyan community, because of course we do not elect leaders from outside, we have never elected an American to lead Kenya. So Kenyans usually elect Kenyans, and they know that these Kenyans have certain traits. So we also have a very big issue as Kenyans. My father likes telling me that if you see Nairobi elect a certain governor, Nairobians look like that governor. Mm -hmm. So, I believe it's a concerted effort. If we need to change our country, we need to start from the bottom. Yeah. Like the bottom up, not the fake one that was, uh, not the one that was used to campaign, but we need a very serious bottom up. 
we need to start from the bottom because these collective bargaining agreements will not be implemented by somebody who has arisen from the system from the 1980s and they know that these collective bargaining agreements are there just for formalities. So yeah. we need as a country to be serious. If we mm. need change as a country, we need to start from the bottom. We cannot elect a governor and then two years later you say, this guy is corrupt. And you're the same person that went for Unga when that person was vying. How do you expect them to return their money? So as a country, we need to get to a certain point and ask ourselves, do we want to continue languishing in poverty or do we want leaders who will take us to the next level? And that is what as Gen Z's we decided. Yeah. We decided that we have gotten to a point in this country that we just want change. Yes. There is a lot of voter up in the last election at least 8 million people did not vote or a certain figure close to that. So once we get to that point that the Gen Z's have gotten to, and you know some people are still underestimating us that in 2027 they will not vote. Yeah. And I will, I will want to assure you that you, you are very much delusional. Mm -hmm. So what I would want to say is that as a country we need to get serious, that if change needs to come, we will come to this studio for uh, probably another time and we will call leaders and they will come here and they will speak, but the problem stems from the bottom. So if we deal with that road from that place, from the root of it, and that is why we need to motivate our teachers to teach the children integrity from baby class, to teach a child that you cannot start stealing exams in baby class. Uh, by the time you are getting to Form 4, you'll become a very hardcore criminal. So yeah. we need it to start from the bottom, from that place where that child gets into the school. We need a total overhaul of the system. And as Gen Z's, by God's grace, we'll ensure that happens. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you, if you noticed, uh, uh, the teachers that are in private institutions are not vocal much in this strike. Most of them who are vocal are Cooper teachers who are in public institutions. But also, I don't know from your view, do you see yourself getting prefer working for a private entity or you'd rather go the public way now that there are so many issues festering in there as an alternative even as you look forward to even furthering and expanding your career as a teacher or as an educator? All right. I, I think working for the government is, uh, is much good rather than working in a private school. Uh, but the problem, uh, Mr. Sakwa, is that we Kenyans, we are very, very, very hungry. Uh, we don't look for, for others, right? We don't care for others. The way you have said that uh, private uh, teachers who are working for private schools, they are not vocal because they are okay. They are being paid by the, the, the private schools. They are not uh, involved in this uh, government thing. Now, we are looking for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm okay, I don't care about my brother, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what I can say is that uh, uh, the way he has ma mentioned earlier that um, maybe there is uh, uh, sometime maybe these, these, uh, these uh, cupid uh, leaders one of these days, they will be called on a table. They have the wambiwe iki to tufanyevi, tufanyevi. Then they, they shut up, mm -hmm. right? Then the strike ends, right? Mm -hmm. But no changes have been made, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like if we, we remove this mentality that uh, it's me, mm -hmm. let's be it's us, not it's me. If I feel like you are being uh, discriminated, okay. I stand up for you. Yeah. Not that I, I, I have been sorted, then I keep quiet, mm. right? Yeah. So I feel like uh, working for the government is the best thing, uh -huh. but having good leadership is mm. the most best thing. Yeah. yeah. So you believe some of this inconsistency? Because uh, they're saying even employment of JSS intern you know, teachers, they want them to be employed on permanent and pensionable terms. But then you realize this same, same issue was also festering in the Ministry of Health. Sure. Uh, the intern doctor said, I think they had gone for, I think, two years without uh, letters of appointment. And in fact, uh, I was reading an update, they are going on a strike, I think, in the next coming two or one week here. Yeah? Still the same, same issue. So when it comes to now uh, addressing this from, let's say, a cabinet perspective, uh, let's say, cabinet minister of education, yeah, because 
literally is education uh, docket at large. Do you believe uh, most, most of the leaders who are placed in these institutions are not people-oriented? <laughs> it's the Mutuatu syndrome, like you mentioned. Let me get my... Let me get my share and once I'm done. But then also somebody talked of politics and leadership of tokenism mm -hmm. and puppetry, where your boss controls your actions and your moves. So at the end of the day, maybe you, you are elected, uh, you, 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 you qualify to be there, but then the person who is you are under can't allow you to make the right decisions and choices. So do you believe now if we have to disband the whole education sector, do we start from the president up there before we reach to you know, the cabinet secretary, what are the things we are adjusting in here so that we have a clear system, full and functional? All right, I, I, I believe uh, uh, the head is the most important aspect. Now, starting from the cabinet secretary, as you have, uh, you have said, because the president maybe has many, many, many dockets to control. Let me concentrate on the cabinet secretary of education. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, he has the power and he has the mandate to change things, mm -hmm. to change the whole thing concerning the teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing is uh, starting up there. Okay. What does he do? What does he planning to do? What is his plan? Mm -hmm. Maybe he's around, uh, maybe around, around one month, mm -hmm. uh, he entered into the office. What is his plan yeah. for this, uh, this, this issue? Now, the, the main thing here, or the, the big elephant here, is uh, corruption, mm -hmm. right? You, you get something, you keep quiet, but other teachers are, are complaining, but uh, you don't speak, and you are a leader. I think it's high time, because we can speak as uh, teachers, they can speak for, for themselves, yeah. right? I believe that uh, teachers, should not be intimidated, mm -hmm. should not be threatened, right? If the issues are not addressed, let them continue with the strike, right? Mm -hmm. So do, don't say That's that, what you uh, believe. I believe that. So uh -huh. Don't say that Mukubwa uh, Mesema. Right. Okay, Mukubwa Mesema. Is our issue solved? Right. Yes or no? If mm -hmm. no, let us proceed with the strike. Mm -hmm. But if the issues have been solved, okay, we can go back to work. Mm -hmm. Right now, yeah. there's a time that uh, there's a point that we don't listen to to leaders. I don't say that we disrespect our leaders. Mm -hmm. We respect them because they are our our spokespersons. Mm -hmm. All right. So if they are our spokesperson, mm -hmm. they must speak for us, not themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we are saying that teachers should be considered, teachers' salary should be increased if they have not been increased. Mm -hmm. Don't come here and tell us we will increase next year. Mm -hmm. that, that thing will be rotational, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, we, are, we are in this, all of us. Mm -hmm. We are in this, all of us. We have to speak up. If the leaders don't speak for, for us, yeah. we have to speak for ourselves. Uh, somebody here yeah. says, Anit Wahana, a good friend of mine, and Sema, me, I just believe that the hiring process of especially government teachers is never fair and open. There's even bribing. Is it true, uh, uh, Mr. Gichangi? There's, uh, there's people who bribe their way to get up there. And instead of like uh, them uh, respecting that hiring process, there's some people who sneak in some you know, nefarious ways and it ends up leaving a large portion of teachers that deserve to even get opportunities to be enrolled into you know, the, the employment program. Once again, to reiterate what I had said, yeah. Kenya's problem stems from the bottom. A fish rots from the head, but a tree dies from the roots. Yeah. And both scenarios will eventually lead to the same thing, decay. And that is one very big issue we have in Kenya. The rot starts from the bottom, yeah. right from baby class. So you will find somebody uh, some of them will not even have to bribe. Let's say I have a parent in the Ministry of Education, and I, some of these people do not even have the requisite papers. We've heard yeah. such issues. We know some of the leaders leading us never completed their degrees, mm. and they are very vocal and very shameless. Yeah. And 
that is something we suffer as, as a country. Our corruption, as Mr. Mbati has said, is not just financial. We are morally corrupt as Kenyans. And you see, once this corruption, uh, this corruption is usually very deep-rooted in our system, you will find nowadays that once you pass a certain checkpoint, a police checkpoint, it's not even, not even think choice when you see somebody greeting a police officer with a 50 or 100 shillings. Okay. So the corruption that we have as a country is, it, it has come to a point that we do not even feel it. Mm. That the only corruption we feel is these billions of shillings, but we forget that corruption starts from the root. Yeah. So uh, the issue with these people who usually bribe is that they make it very hard for us to change the system. As yeah. much as they are thinking about themselves, they do not think that probably they will have a child who will find the same, same system. They will have a niece who will find the same, same system. And yes, they need money at that point. And sometimes we cannot also entirely judge because there are circumstances that push people to do certain things. But we need to also think of the future. You bribe, you'll bribe today, and then tomorrow your child will find that system and they will not have money. Right. Or because we also have the issue of teachers. By the way, the teachers are also the people these financial institutions love going to so yeah. that they can ensure that they are entrapped, that they are ensnared in debts yeah. because they know that their salaries are not enough. So we need to ensure that teachers, uh -huh. uh, that people get into service in the right way. Yes, I do applaud the efforts of the government to digitize these processes of employment but the new funding model is also a digitized process, yet we have a lot of issues with it. Mm -hmm. So Kenya's problem stems from the bottom, and once we deal with the roots of this plant, we'll have the head, we'll have the apex, the branches of it being sound. Yeah. One of the issues, again, that still there is a lack of active and engaging communication and also participation from the higher-up high ministry in, ed in education, especially in decision-making, and even a delegation of duties and even some of the problems include the industry at large so the education in the education sector is an industry yeah? just the same way the journalism sector is still an industry on its own so there's some uh, there's unrest uh, right now they're they're on strike but if they have to speak and be heard that chain of communication and active participation from both sides is missing. Do you believe that one as well? P perhaps if we coil around a creative way of coming up with a model, like after this strike, from now on, henceforth, please, let's have this channel of engagement. So that if decisions are made up there about teachers, then it's also reflecting on what teachers are saying on the ground, and it connects to even learners, and then to parents, and out to even the institutions as well. Do you believe that? Mm, at the height of the Cold War, in Russia, we had, or in the USSR, we had somebody called Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah. And Gorbachev is one of the people who really helped Russia. Fight him as they may, he mm -hmm. helped them because Russia was going to a very bad place. Okay. As Kenya, to some extent, is. We, are not, we have not reached to that point. But one of the policies that Mikhail Gorbachev had is called Glasnost and Perestroika. Uh -huh. Glasnost and Perestroika means openness and accountability. Right. And if, as a country, we are able to achieve that, we do not even have to do a lot of creativity. Mm -hmm. Just need to be open with each other. Yeah. The government tells us that we have this amount of money, mm -hmm. and the Auditor General confirms it because, uh, okay, we also need Auditor Generals who will be, will not be controlled by the government. Yeah. And. Once we are open and accountable, and I had to tell the president when we had the town hall that he's a man who advises his advisors. And now, even speaking of the chain of command, yeah. you find that he's, he, in as much as he controls a lot of dockets, he has a hold on all of them. Mm -hmm. I will just compare it to the previous regime. The, the man that led us, uh, the former president, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, was not somebody who was very hands-on. It was not the best of thing to have uh, the head of state being somebody who is sometimes even drunk. But the advantage of it is that we had people like Matiang who are very competent in what they did. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to somebody like the former cabinet secretary, you find that he gives two very contradicting statements in the same day. Mm -hmm. So if we have a president who knows everything about running the government and he wants everything that he wants implemented, we have mm -hmm. a very big problem. because. Yeah. 
when we decide that the system must change, we, get, we come up with slogans like Ruto must go. Okay. So first we need openness and accountability and Mikhail Gorbachev's policy succeeded because mm -hmm. once people are open with each other, we find that it's very easy to communicate. Mm -hmm. The teachers know that we do not have enough money. The GSS mm -hmm. teachers are told we cannot employ you for this and this reason on permanent okay. and pensionable basis, but mm -hmm. there is this and this opportunity and we can increase your salary to this and that uh, stage. We can also have the government ensuring that the cost of living comes down. Mm -hmm. Because if 17, the, if we had the cost of living uh, at a lower level, the per capita income, the DPI, the disposable income, it would have been even hard to see the teachers go on streets. But yeah. nowadays you go to the supermarket with 1,000 and you mm -hmm. come up with pencils and very mundane things. So yeah. if the cost of living were to come down, we'll also find it very easy for us to remove teachers from the streets. We'll find it very easy because I will not be very much worried about being permanently and pensionably employed if I have a salary that sustains me. If the government is able to bring down the cost of living, if the government stops burdening teachers every time that we have a project, the government wants the teachers to be the one to finance that thing. Mm -hmm. The government wants to cut the salaries of the teachers without even asking them. The government wants to just use these people for taxes. You find that if the finance bill passed, probably we would have somebody earning fifty thousand in terms of gross payment, receiving twenty nine thousand, which is very unfair because I'm working for fifty thousand, but I'm getting twenty nine thousand. Mm -hmm. And so, as the government and as also as a people, because as I've said, we have a system with a problem. We have a tree that is rotting from the roots. Mm -hmm. So, if we were to change the system from that place and apply Mikhail Gorbachev's policy of openness and accountability, uh -huh. that would be the best place to start. Second thing, we need the president to also trust in his people. Right. We need the president to allow his people to work because it's not even about politics. It's very obvious. Mm -hmm. The president is the only person who knows what the new funding model is. We have mm -hmm. a whole cabinet secretary who is blank Mm -hmm. because I interacted with the previous one. So okay. the president has a lot of things. Let's even say the shift, the, the health policy that will be coming soon, yeah. that will replace NHIF. Mm -hmm. You find that most probably it is still coming from the president. And mm -hmm. in as much as he wants to transform this country, we also need to be taken slowly. We need mm -hmm. the president to trust in his people it will become very easier to deal with some of these things. It will become very easier because we will not always be blaming the president. During yeah. the era of Matiangi, people fought him. People were not fighting Uhuru mm -hmm. at the time that he decided to bring reforms to the ministry. But right yeah. now, if we find a certain CS bringing some reforms, we will mm -hmm. fight the president because we are almost sure that that thing is not coming from that minister. That minister is just a puppet and the president is the ventriloquist. So we need an overhaul of the system. We need openness and accountability. We need a president who knows his place, that he, he is just a manager. That he is just a manager. So, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you, this, this thing is also even reflecting in the higher, uh, higher learning institutions. It's, it looks like the whole entire uh, Ministry of Education is in crisis. Uh, the issue of the university funding model as well, it's being debated. In fact, uh, uh, I think uh, they're yet to go on a strike, right? There's an impending strike. Uh, uh, I don't know, wh wh when is the strike? Because uh, you're still in school. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, it's healthy to mention here yeah, when sure, is the, sure. the, the strike. Yeah. Uh, uh, so mm. students saying, you know what? Yeah, it's a dis. Oh, it is a teaser. It's a teaser. So it's next week, yeah? All right. Yeah. So it looks like the whole ministry needs an overhaul. So for what do you believe are, are the systems, <coughs> or rather, let me say policies, that this uh, cabinet secretary, because everyone is now looking at the cabinet secretary, but also now at the government. But the name is TSE, NAT, Coupet, and then the president. But then last week I spoke to uh, one of the university students here. They, they told me they don't even remember the first of the new cabinet secretary. And here is a ministry that's in crisis. So what are some of the things that this guy should put in place to ensure that, you know, the funding model maybe should be revamped and maybe they should do a pilot of it to see if it works, maybe to, I don't know, empirically, yeah? And then our teachers can now be paid. And also, do you believe that they are going to be fully, you know, uh, looked at? And there are things uh, going to be resolved, and then we're going to resume back to normal. Because all the all these things are dragging down or behind the academic calendar. I don't know if you see it in that way. All right. 
So what I can say on that, I think the way Mr. Kitonga has mentioned that um, the president should be a manager, should be a supervisor. For instance, I, I believe the new funding model was brought by who? By the Minister of Education? Mm -hmm. Now, the president in, uh, in a town hall meeting. Was it brought by the president or the Ministry of Education? There's one somebody here who said it's an IMF, it's an IMF <laughs> model. I don't know if you saw that, yeah? Yes. Now, now the, the thing is, uh, they are saying to us that uh, it's the same thing, uh -huh. like these uh, mm, band things, band mm -hmm. one, band two, band five. Yeah. It was there, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing the president <coughs> told us. Now, I believe that um, the president should be a manager or a supervisor. Mm -hmm. Let him give trust, have trust in his people. Okay. Let him have trust in his cabinet secretaries. Mm -hmm. right? I, I believe that um, if we have trust in these, uh, in these people, now I can say the president uh, maybe for, I think the president is overworking. Overworking how? He's doing all of the work. Mm -hmm. Now, that becomes overwhelmed to him. Now, he can't control everything, right? Mm -hmm. So, I believe that uh, if the president allows these people to work, the way uh, Mr. Tong has mentioned that uh, there's some p people who, who don't know the cabinet secretary for education mm -hmm. because he is just there, right? Mm -hmm. He is not given that mandate to work as a cabinet secretary. He has, he has mentioned nothing concerning the new funding model, right? So we want to hear from, from him. We want to hear from the, the ministry concerning okay. the, the same. Now, what I can say about the new funding model, I think um, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. We agree. It's okay. But the thing is, uh, what are we doing when we find someone in band one who is supposed to be in band five? Yeah. Okay? Now, that's the big question. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, let me mention uh, concerning the previous regime of uh, His Excellency, the, the former president, Urumegai Kenyat, right? The guy was just cool, right? Now, l l let me say, maybe His Excellency, the president, William Samuel Rute, mm -hmm. is over uh, maybe involving the country, right? Mm -hmm. Is over involving the country in decision making. Okay. That's why we find, uh, I don't want you to get me, to get me wrong, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you, you have seen he, he calls the meetings with the students, with yeah. the stakeholders, with everyone to discuss concerning some things. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that uh, if we can give this, uh, the, the government is, is job, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let them work as the government. What we need is solutions. That's why we, we elected them. Okay. All right? Yeah. If there's a problem, let them find solutions. Okay. Not put or push them to the to the public. The public, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I believe we can maybe we can hold it right there. Uh, do you believe, uh, Mr. Gichang? Do you believe there'll be a, a permanent solution to annihilate this problem? Mm, I believe there will be one, but uh -huh. it's not one that will be solved by paracetamol or okay. a medicine <laughs> that will take some three, four days. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I believe that it's something that requires intentionality. That is, okay. it is something that will start from the bottom. That mm -hmm. as a country, we mm -hmm. need to decide as Singapore that we want to move forward. Okay. Because taking the example of Singapore and China, mm -hmm. there was a time that this country was far behind us. Mm -hmm. But now look at the sad state of affairs. Mm -hmm. We can even go for a loan from these countries. Mm -hmm. And we've had problems since independence. And I'm also a historian. Yeah. Because it's very good to look at history and see where we are coming from. Okay. So as a country, there are problems that have been there since independence. And mm -hmm. we cannot solve them in one in or two day. years. Okay. We cannot solve them by one election. So I believe there are permanent solutions. But mm -hmm. also as Kenyans, we need to get to a point that mm -hmm. we decide mm -hmm. that we do not want to continue wallowing in this quagmire. Okay, I think we can close it at there because it's already 10 a.m. Uh, thank you so much. Mr. Gichangi Gitonga from uh, JQuant, alongside Nicola Sombati from ZTEC for your sentiments in this conversation. And also thank you too as well for watching us from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early right here at Y244 channel and at Brian Sakwano 1. See you tomorrow.